This hour, Josh Getzoff joins us, the radio voice of the Pittsburgh Penguins, and we're very excited to bring him on. Josh, how you doing, man? How's the offseason for you? Good, Rod. I mean, it looks like it's pretty good for you back there with the, I see the palm trees, the sunshine. We have a little bit of that in Pittsburgh right now until it all recedes to the grayness of the winter, but that means hockey's here, so that's okay, too. How do you feel about road trips to South Florida to play the Panthers, by the way? From a pure non-hockey point of view, how do you feel when you see them coming up on the schedule? So we usually get the schedule in a normal season like this one, what, somewhere around mid to late June, early July. That's the first one I look for, the South Florida road trip. I need to know when we're going down there. I mean, you hope that it's not a back-to-back. You hope you have a couple days around there. And the NHL is usually pretty generous to us in Pittsburgh and gives us a date in February maybe or a game in Tampa in February where we can uh, get away from the cold and gloom uh, in Pittsburgh that comes with the winter months So and the Northeast in general for that matter. So, yeah, looking forward to those trips down there this year. And, uh, hey, the Panthers are always going to be a good challenge for the Penguins, so the games are pretty exciting too. It's funny you say that. The Kraken were here for like three, four days after they played and ended the Panthers' 12-game winning streak to open the season. At home, by the way, to open the season. But on the Penguins' vein, we can come back on the Panthers anytime you want. But this offseason for you guys could have been, Josh, very tumultuous. And it ended up being not tumultuous at all because you got the big boy signed. But how concerned were you that uh, this was going to be a shakeup of this roster that's been together for so long? I think it's fair to say that everyone had a a high level of expectation that most likely of the three of Chris Letang, Brian Rust, and Evgeny Malkin, that maybe one would be back, possibly two, definitely not three. So I think the fact that all three of them came back, and really all three came back in a situation of being slightly under where maybe they were projected to make on the open market, is a a feather in the cap of the Pittsburgh Penguins and Ron Hextall and the Fenway Sports Group. And I think it also speaks to something, Rod, and that's that these players have talked about, coaches too, management as well, the last couple of years, obviously the shortcomings in the first round against the New York Islanders and the New York Rangers. Well, they've said, hey, listen, we didn't get where we wanted to be. We really believe that we can take the next step. And essentially, I look at this as Ron Hextall, Fenway Sports Group saying, listen, we believe you. But now you got to act on it because we're locking in Evgeny Malkin. We're locking in Chris Letang. We're sacrificing, you know, what could have maybe been a gain of some youth. We're adding a little bit of age. But at the same time, we're keeping the core together for something that's unprecedented here uh, in the National Hockey League and pro sports for that matter, in the sense that Crosby, Letang, and Malkin will be teammates going into this year for the 17th straight season. So uh, it's pretty remarkable. And I'm interested to see how it it jumpstarts and maybe fuels these guys, jolts them a little bit. Uh, to know that they're going to be Penguins for life. Absolutely. And I I have to ask you this, Tristan Jari back too, but he was injured for most of that playoff run against the Rangers. So you were there, you called it, I believe. They went, uh, lost to a team that went to the conference finals. If Tristan Jari's healthy, how much of a difference does that, does the series outcome change if Tristan Jari's healthy last year? Well, I'm not sure where your listeners are located in the New York area, but if they're in New York City, I'm sorry to offend you, but that series was over if Tristan Jari was healthy. I think the Penguins were the better team, really, with the flow of play in that series and how things went. You know, at the end of the day, and this is no knock on Louis Domingue, it's just the reality, he's a third-string goaltender, and he was asked to do a lot, and he did as much as he possibly could. Uh, But with no Casey to Smith and no Tristan Jari, the guy on the bench behind him was Alex DiOrio, who's never played in an NHL game. Uh, and has just seen AHL action for the first time in his career over the last couple of years. So it was going to be Louis Domingue's series to win or lose without those two guys there. And I think he honestly gave the Penguins everything he could. But at the end of the day, there's a reason why he's been kind of a teeterer as far as seeing NHL and AHL action in his career. If Tristan Jari's there, I think the Penguins win that series. And then who knows what happens as far as the road that they go on. Because as you mentioned, the Rangers ended up going all the way to the conference final. And I believe jumped out to a two-game-to-nothing lead on the Tampa Bay Lightning before they kind of fell off the rails a little bit. So uh, it, it's all, you know, a what-if, could-if uh, type of situation. But I think a healthy Tristan Jari going into this year, and I actually just talked to him a couple weeks ago, and he's been training four days a week uh, in Sherwood Park, Alberta. So he's ready to go. Uh, and he'll be back in Pittsburgh after the Labor Day holiday uh, here in the United States and uh, ready to go for the season ahead. From the viewers, Nelson writes in, he says, Big Pens fan here, is this the last kick at the can for this core group? How would you answer that? How, how are the Penguins looking at this, this group? 
Um, I think that it's it's fair to say that this could be the last kick with the, the current roster as assembled. I mean, there's the reality that these guys are all under contract. Um, but the way that I look at it is I heard Bill Daly, uh, Deputy Commissioner of the NHL, make an interesting remark the other day that he expected the cap to go up about 2 to $3 million next year. So if that's the case, the Penguins have some contracts coming off the books, and there are some players that are going to be out there to maybe reload and keep this thing going in a direction where you can compete and challenge for a Stanley Cup. Uh, with that being said, though, I think this team this year, they've done everything they wanted to set out to do in the offseason. They kept the core together. Ron Hextall said they wanted to get bigger on the blue line. They added Jeff Petrie. They added Jan Ruta. Uh, and, and they kept you know a, a large portion of the group that got them into the postseason and really had some strong moments contending for a Metro Division title pretty much until the end of, uh, beginning of March last year uh, back together. So. I'm curious to see how it all plays out, but I do think a healthy Tristan Jari, a healthy Evgeny Malkin out of the gate, Jason Zucker out of the gate, those things make a difference, uh, and we'll see it right away for the Penguin. You know, last one for you, because it may, I hope, take you a few minutes to answer. Um, well, for <laughs> one, you ask where our viewers are. 20% of our viewers are American. The vast majority are Canadian prairies. Our number one city in america for viewership is las vegas of all things figure that one out it's okay. our seventh highest city for viewership There's a lot of golden knights fans watch this show but <laughs> i'm astounded when i'm in canada how many penguins jerseys i see on kids when you make roadies through canada have you are you astounded that how many fans there are of the penguins in canada Really, I, I am, Rod. And I'll say the two in particular that jump out to me, I would, I would throw Vancouver into the mix too, but Montreal and Toronto, uh, really, when we stay in Toronto, it's, it's as if the Beatles come out of the hotel when they get on the bus uh, to go to Scotiabank Arena. The, the mob scene there, obviously, after 87, but to see a bunch of different guys on this Penguins roster and, and see the star power, Chris Letang in Montreal, obviously draws a crowd as well. Um, but, you know, it, it's really interesting. And I, and I would even stretch it beyond the Canadian border. It's fun when we go out to places like Arizona and south to Raleigh. Uh, even in Fort Lauderdale, you see those black and gold jerseys everywhere. The Penguins fans, uh, they're fans of the team, but they're also fans of the players. And I think that makes for a really unique mix as you travel throughout the National Hockey League. But certainly, you know, the logo and the icons that are on the team right now and have been on the team in the past make it pretty popular and make it pretty marketable. And uh, I don't expect that to change with us being back out on the road again in, in really, what, a month and a half, essentially, we're ready to go. Right. Shoot, I could talk to you about this all day because in Arizona, I was there. I don't know how many years you've been calling the games, but I was there. It was Larry Fitzgerald night. They honored Larry Fitzgerald. Pittsburgh was the opposition. Were you there that night? I was not, but I'll tell you, it's the backyard brawl here in Pittsburgh tomorrow with Pitt in West Virginia where Fitzgerald went to college. So it's, he's, he's a big talk of the town right now, so it all relates. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, it's just like it's like Pittsburgh people in these southern locales for sure. In Canada, hockey fans. Yes. Pittsburgh people, I think, going to those stadiums and barns in the south. And last one, Trent is watching from Norway, and he says, Penguins question, does Sidney Crosby still have it? You call him on a game-by-game -game basis. You see him in practice. Where, where, where is his skill levels compared to the peak time in his career? I would argue that right now he's as dialed in as he's ever been in his career. And I think that there are a couple reasons for that. One, if you look at his production the last couple of seasons, it's, you know, the, the guys who are the finalists for the Hart Trophy, I'm not going to argue with anything there, especially the winners. Uh, but when you think about what he's done and what it's meant to the Penguins' success, he's very much in the mix for an NHL MVP conversation again. I know he's got some in his trophy case already, uh, but he's been that good. He looks at certain areas of his game and he improves them Every single summer, he takes a little step forward in, in certain departments, and it just makes him such a complete player. I'll just tell a quick story. I think back to one thing from last year when he was sitting on the verge of 500 goals. I think there was three games in a row where he was at 499. And in two of those games, the Penguins had leads late, and their opponents uh, pulled the goalie for the extra attacker. So you're thinking, okay, there's a chance. If he gets a chance at the empty net, why wouldn't he go for it? But here he is at the other end of the ice in his own zone, sliding and blocking shots and keeping the puck out of his own net. And that's just kind of how he's wired. He's wired for his success, of course, but also for his team's success. Uh, and I do believe that he is, still has a lot left in the tank. I think that he's going to be fueled by Evgeny Malkin and Chris Letang, two of his best buddies, uh, being in the fold for the foreseeable future. And also the extension his head coach, Mike Sullivan, got yesterday. That means a lot to him, too, because those two have developed quite a strong relationship, and they uh, you know, really are the two guys at the top of the totem pole as it pertains to the Penguins. 
Well, this has been a wonderful Penguins update. Thanks uh, for the time, Josh, and good luck with the season. Look us up when you're down here in South Florida, man, and good luck with the season. Thanks, Rod. I appreciate it, and we will. I'll look for you. Sounds good. Josh gets off the voice of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of the Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.